Hey everybody, Michael Snyder, Pacific Northwest Weather Watch. Today is February 6th. Today we're going to do a little bit something different. We're going to talk about the Madden-Julian Oscillation, the MJO, La Nina, and El Nino, and its effect on the Pacific Northwest weather for the last few weeks. And what we can expect here in the extended, we'll take a look at the extended forecast for the Pacific Northwest. But here we're taking a look at global sea surface temperatures. And you can see where the warm water tends to be over the Indian and Western Pacific Oceans here. And you can see why this would be such a driver of weather across the planet, hence why La Nina and El Nino episodes are so significant. And check out the Atlantic Ocean, for example, how much heat content versus the Western Pacific. It's a, quite a big difference. And the Indian Ocean is a tropical ocean too. And the MJO resides in these areas and they measure certain phases that the MJO is in. During a La Nina episode, for example, you get stronger trade winds and stronger easterlies that can push water up towards the maritime continent in the Western Pacific here. And that creates a pooling of warmer water in these areas generally. El Nino is basically the reverse where warm water builds up against the coast of South America. And you can imagine how this changes the dynamic of the patterns across the Pacific Ocean. As you get warm water here, you change the gradient across the Pacific Ocean versus warm water here where you have a stronger gradient near the Asian continent. And Siberia and Asia tends to be one of the coldest land masses on the planet. So you can set up some pretty significant gradients and some temperature differences from the warm ocean out here versus uh, Siberia, for example. So I mentioned the MJO and its phases a second ago, and the MJO is an eastward propagating area of tropical convection that moves around the planet about every 45 to 60 days. And downstream of that upward motion from the tropical convection, you get downward motion. This can cause, this causes troughing and ridging downstream from where the MJO is active. And this can align up with La Nina conditions and enhance those phases and same with El Nino. It tends to be weaker during El Nino periods though. So here we've got a typical wintertime La Nina pattern characterized by this high pressure ridging out here over the Pacific Ocean near the Aleutian Islands. And this high pressure ridging allows for a more variable polar jet stream as we saw in December and into January as that jet stream rode up over the top of the ridge and back down into our area bringing us in our Arctic outbreak. And this is caused by effects of that warm water building up off in the western pacific there as you get the very cold continent of asia and the very warm water down there over the maritime continent you get a powerful jet stream and that causes downstream troughing and then ridging and then troughing down over our area so go ahead and looking at el nino as a comparison we've got warm water that builds up over the equator towards South America. So that kind of changes the gradient dynamic across the Pacific Ocean here and gives a more persistent south and southwest jet stream that moves into North America. It kind of keeps us much warmer as a general rule. Okay, so let's just jump in to see just why there's been this persistent ridging over the Pacific Northwest here. If you look at this map, you can see the ridge formed off the west coast of North America here, Washington, Oregon, California, British Columbia, Alaska. Pacific Ocean here is the maritime continent in Asia. We're looking at the jet stream at 200 millibars, which is way up there at 34,000 feet. And you'll notice it's very zonal all the way across the Pacific Ocean from Asia. And this is highlighting a weak Madden-Julian oscillation activity here which also means that La Nina is going to be weak. If the Madden-Julian Oscillation was stronger, it'd be causing buckles in this jet stream and it'd get the Rossby wave train going more and we'd be getting troughing and associated ridging and we'd at least be mixing things up through the Pacific Northwest here. But since it's been so zonal and strong, it's not breaking until it gets towards the Pacific Northwest, which in turn does allow Arctic air to get down into the eastern portions of the USA, which is what they've been getting for the last month off and on. So putting this map into motion here, you can see the ridging over us. And then we get that system on Monday, a little tiny buckle for us, but a very weak system. And the ridge immediately builds again. As you can see, this zonal jet stream just maintains itself well out into the Pacific Ocean, not breaking until it creates this ridge for the Pacific Northwest. And you can see the ridge continues on into the extended here as the zonal jet stream just dominates the Pacific Ocean. And finally, you'll notice it start to break up a bit in the extended and we get a system that may move through the following weekend on into Monday. But then the ridging seems pretty persistent all the way out through the 10 day period, 248 hours here on last night's European model run. So I wanted to show everybody this. This is the Madden-Julian oscillation and its phases and how we measure them. So you can see the phases on here 
seven, eight, one, two, three, four, five, and six. And once you get closer to the center of this graph, the weaker the Madden Julian oscillation is. The further you get away from it, the stronger. And you can see December 28th is when this starts here. And you can see we were in pattern or phase seven. And you can see colder than normal for the Northwest. That's the analog, and that's what we had. And then you can see it started to weaken a bit as we went into January into phase eight, and we started to warm up here in the Pacific Northwest. And then you can see it started to get very weak here through January and on into February. A very weak MJO is characterized by being inside the circle. And then you can see the forecast here shows us it getting a little bit stronger and maybe moving into phase three or four. But you can see the ensemble runs are all over, so confidence is low here. But I just wanted to point this out, that this kind of lined up well with what we saw occur in late December and on into January and February. This weak Madden-Julian oscillation is what's um, giving rise to that very zonal jet stream across the Pacific Ocean and bringing us our ridging right now. And there's also a Kelvin wave that's moving across the ocean that's dampening the La Nina conditions as well. So I mentioned the Kelvin wave a minute ago, and I wanted to show you this depiction of it here. You can see the timeline here from late summer, August, September, October, November, December, January. And you can see the date line at 180 degrees here. And these are longitude points as we go towards the west. And you can see we had good La Nina conditions going here through October, November, December. And now this warm air water is kind of intruding on our La Nina conditions a bit. So uh, Kelvin wave is a eastward motion of a warmer water there in the Pacific Ocean. And you can see where it kind of hampered our Nino 3.4. This is where we measure it here. That's how we measure La Nina conditions. You can see we're barely into La Nina conditions, actually. it's The cutoff is uh, 0 0.5 Celsius. And anyway, that's where we measure it. And you can see that we've warmed up a bit since, a bit since December. And you, this is a result of this Kelvin wave kind of moving through there, disrupting La Nina conditions. So on top of that Madden-Julian oscillation being weaker than normal, our La Nina conditions are waning a bit too. And this is likely to return or recover a bit as this Kelvin wave moves through. But if we look here closely, this is the end of December here. And you can see this powerful jet stream kind of retracted. You notice it's not out over the Pacific Ocean here. And on this one, and to January, you see how it hit, extended out into the Pacific Ocean. And that's why we got our ridging here. And notice how when this jet stream was retracted back westerly, we had more of a troughing flow. And that's why we got our Arctic outbreak through the Pacific Northwest there. So you can still see we have the La Nina signature off the coast of South America, that upwelling, that cold air extending off the coast all the way out to the Central Pacific here. And this is where we measure La Nina conditions, area 3.4 that we've designated in the Central Pacific. And we're not likely to be out of La Nina conditions uh, through at least the springtime coming up based on recent forecasts. This Kelvin wave will pass through eventually and we will probably drop back down in our temperatures here across the Central Pacific. But just jumping right on into the extended forecast here, here's last night's European run here. And so now that maybe this will make a little bit more sense. This is that persistent jet stream I was talking about as a result of that weak Madden-Julian oscillation activity. And the La Nina conditions being weakened by that Kelvin wave is just kind of a double whammy, just letting the zonal flow set up all the way out into the Pacific Ocean here. And as you see downstream of that, we get the buckle and we get the ridging as a result of that zonal flow. And if we put this into motion here, that weak system moves through Monday. You'll notice that flatten that ridge a tiny bit, but then the ridge quickly returns on into Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and then on to next Monday. Potentially, we get a system moves through, but the ridging keeps trying to redevelop off our coastline there, as you can see. More of a dirty ridge this time. There'll probably be some clouds and activity precipitation wise coming over the top of a ridge in that configuration. And then perhaps into the extended, we get into more of a northwest colder flow with some troughing over the Pacific Northwest, but we're getting far out in the forecast there and confidence decreases rapidly this far out. But again, you can see that zonal flow just blasting across Pacific Ocean, but it does look like it breaks up at times. But as you can see, even in the extended, that's a pretty persistent jet stream coming across the region there that keeps re redeveloping ridging. How close will that ridging be is going to be the big foreteller in what kind of weather we're going to expect here in the Pacific Northwest. 
But the big picture here is really that we're not getting these powerful southwest systems that move through here. We, you know, we usually get windstorms and an atmospheric river off and on during these winter months, and we've just been locked down really since uh, early January now. So that's what's going on. I hope you guys learned some stuff about the MJO and how La Nina can interact with those phases of MJ, the MJO. It, it lined up really well in late December for us as we got that big ridging well out here over the Aleutians that allowed that north flow to come down onto us. But now this ridge has just been so close. It's been affecting our weather and keeping us quite dry. We should remain quite dry in the seven to 10 day period. And we'll just keep watching for some kind of change in this pattern to relax this ridge over our area. So hopefully you guys are enjoying these videos. Click like and subscribe and I will talk to you guys tomorrow.